Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our living and loving Redeemer. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he is asked many different questions. Is this or that lawful? Why are you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And when Jesus is asked questions, sometimes he answers those questions with a parable. Other times he asks, he answers the question with a question of his own. And other times, like in our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus doesn't seem to answer the question at all. Question, Lord, will those who are saved be few? Answer, strive to enter through the narrow door. Well, in order to understand this a little bit better, let, let's look at the question. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. This is part of the travel narrative. And somebody comes up to him. We don't know who. Somebody comes up to him and says, Lord, will those who are saved be few? How many people are going to heaven? Conversely, how many people are going to hell? Which group will have more in it? It's a reasonable question, right? You probably wondered the same thing. There are many different reasons to ask a question like that. Perhaps somebody might ask this question, hoping that they will make the cut. Oh, I hope I get in. Hopefully there will be enough room, or hopefully the bar is set to where I am on the right side of it. Some people ask this question, worrying who might be left out. Maybe they wonder about a friend or a neighbor, perhaps a, a family member. Who, whose faith might be in question, and, and you're, you're wondering, how many will be saved? Will, will this person be saved? Or maybe their word, is God being fair? Is God excluding too many people? Or maybe some people ask this question, hoping that some won't make the cut. You know, those people. We wouldn't want them in heaven with us. We don't know this man's reason for asking the question, but we have what Jesus says in response to it. Verse 24 says, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. This response seems to imply that the answer to the man's question is yes. Yes, the number of people who will be saved is few. Now, maybe that's the answer he was looking for. Again, after all, you, you don't want to let the wrong sort of people in. And, and if the number is few, and you're one of those few, you are special. You are set apart. And there are parts of Scripture that, that seem to back this answer up. There are many different religions in the world, not just today, but back then. There are many different religions. There are many good people. But Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the only way, Jesus says. All of these other ways do not lead to salvation. They lead to damnation. It seems like the number of people who will be saved is few. But what if you're not one of them? This text can be terrifying. I mean, look, look, look where it goes. Uh, again, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. 
he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. Jesus is saying that some people will, will, will be saying, wait, wait, God, God I, I thought we were cool, God, right? I, I've never had anything against you. In our culture today, I think there are many people who think, well, I'm an American. I'm not Muslim. I'm not Jewish. I'm not a diehard atheist. That makes me a Christian, right? I mean, I'm cool with all of this church stuff. I say Merry Christmas rather than Happy Holidays. Whenever I'm at a baseball game and we get the chance, I proudly belt out, God bless America. I grew up going to church from time to time. I went to VBS when the neighbors invited me, and I am friends with all sorts of people who go to church. I even go to some of the events. What do you mean I can't come in? This can be terrifying. Who's in? Who's out? Did, did I make the cut? <laughs> did I strive hard enough for the narrow door? What about my friend, my neighbor, my family? Did they strive hard enough? Is that what this text is about? Strive hard? Be saved? Not only is that thought terrifying, it seems to be at odds with other parts of Scripture, including possibly the rest of this text. Let's go further into our text. After we're told about this place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and, and, and these people being tossed out, Jesus says, and people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Jesus paints a picture of this banquet, of this feast, where people are coming from all the ends of the earth, not just people who were born in the right holy city, but people from all over the world are coming in. And things are being turned upside down. People who thought they were last who thought they were on the margins, or brought in, or elevated to first. So does this mean that not few, but many people will be saved? Scripture does talk that way as well. We're told that God desires all people to be saved, and to come to a knowledge of the truth. John 3.16 says, For God so loved not just a select few, but God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So how do we answer this man's question? Will those who are saved be few? If I give one answer, if I say the number of people who will be saved are few, there will be many people living in terror, wondering if they, they've done enough, if they've strived hard enough, if they've stayed on that path and they are aimed at that narrow door. Have I done it enough? Or maybe that will cause people to live in pride. Good. That's right. The number of people who will be saved is few, and I am one of those few. I have been on the road to that narrow door my whole life. I am doing Great. Both of these people are looking inward. They're looking at themselves and what they've done, how well or how poorly they have strived for that narrow door. They're living in the law. However, if I give the other answer, if I say the number of people who are saved will be many, I fear that there will be a lot of people living with a false sense of security. I'm good. I ate and drank in your presence. You taught in my streets. I'm in for sure. So how do I? How do we answer 
this question. Well, think about the question that I just asked. How, how, how should we answer this question? This isn't my question to answer. This isn't your question to answer. We don't answer this question. We let Jesus answer this question. And how did he answer the question? By shifting the focus. He shifts the focus from the number of people who will be saved and how we could get caught up in the minutia of that answer. He shifts the focus from the number of people who will be saved to the way in which people will be saved. I am the way, Jesus said. I am the door, Jesus said. Jesus shifts the focus from our worldly concerns to him, the one and only way of salvation. Strive to enter through the narrow door. The door is narrow. The door is singular. Jesus Christ, his blood is shed for us. But the door is also wide open. The door is not open to a select few with the right bloodline or, or who sing the, the correct hymns in church or worship in the, in the proper way or use the exact right words. No, the door is wide open to all, for God so loved the world. There will be people who come from east and west, from north and south, to recline at the table in the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is the door. It's also interesting that when he cast the people out, he said, depart from me, all you workers of evil. And when we see that phrase, workers of evil, we can think, okay, well, have I done works of not evil? Have I done good? And, and again, focusing more on the works. The word that's used there is not the word for, for bad or for evil. It's the word for unrighteous. Depart from me, you workers of unrighteous. Well, if I don't want to be a worker of unrighteous, how do I get on the side of righteous, of righteousness? Well, we know that through his death on the cross, the, the, the gift that we received in our baptism when the Holy Spirit came to us is that we were clothed with Christ's righteousness. That through Christ, we become those workers of righteousness. We know that the narrow door is for us, not because we have striven in the right way, but because God has made us his own through his son. And he has done that for us. He has done that for all. He has made that possible. And so we go out and we share and we encourage other people to join us on that road towards that narrow door because that narrow door is for them too. That they may also join us as we recline at the table. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.